Hello, everybody, and welcome to another New Year's episode of Ignite Radio Live. You are with Greg and Stephanie Schleter over the five mighty stations of Annunciation Radio. We are so blessed to be together. We are excited and extra blessed with our guest that you will be hearing from shortly. But we would love to invite you to join us to go more deeply into this great adventure of marriage and family at Proclaim It With Me, I Love My Family. Dot us. I love my family. Dot us. Good job. Um, there you will find well. some tools and resources to help foster a relational atmosphere of talking and praying. So again, we invite you to go there. I love my family. Dot us and check it out and see what a difference just a few minutes a week can make. So to set the stage for our conversation, um, consider when you read the paper or absorb the news the tumult the struggles, the challenges that we see at international levels, right all the way down into our own homes, into our own souls. And I would submit to you that at least a key heart issue we all know is our identity in Christ. Do we know who we are is really key. And the enemy goes after that. But I want to give some more specificity to that and say it really is, dare I say, a a sexual thing. Genesis 127, in his image, so we're talking about identity of God himself, He made them male and female. He created them. What does that mean? To a significant extent, men, we are not going to understand our nature in God except by relationship to a significant extent with women and vice versa. So um, if the enemy really wants to mess up with this desire he put in our hearts, God's desire for intimacy, our deepest yearning for intimacy with God, He's going to mess with our sexuality in a significant way. And if you look at the Sermon on the Mount, really, um, it's the it's the new law, right? We had the old law, which is every bit as applicable. But the new law, the Beatitudes have to deal with that landscape of the inner man, the inner woman. What is the measure of our success on this earth? The beatific vision, the degree to which we stand before God for all eternity and see him as he is. So it's seeing God, and it's not just with our eyes, it's with our hearts. So the center beatitude, Matthew 5, 8, blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. And I'll suggest that in this day and age, with the digital dominance, with these porn, uh, you know, dopamine dispensers that we have in our pockets, that has a profound effect on us, has a profound effect on the way we think and feel. Even if it's short of actively getting online and looking to what we all know as porn, as the one Supreme Court justice says, I can't define it, but I know when I see it. Movies, commercials, advertisements, announcements, they influence the way we think, and I'm going to say they skew the nature of our connection to God. And so we want to set the stage here at the beginning of this year right away in uh, identifying this landscape, the danger that it is, the seriousness that it is, but also to punctuate the victory that we can have in Jesus Christ. Since we have two wonderful guests who I dare say are as close to experts as I know who are seeing great success in this arena of seeing deliverance from lust into love, into intimacy with God, addressing those issues, getting past the clouds, the debris, if you will, um, past those clouds of shame and entering into a context of, of understanding. So that's the stage we want to set. And I want to welcome our guests, Pastor Bo and Melissa Janiszewski. Did I get that right, Melissa? You did. Janiszewski. Welcome, Pastor Bo. Matt, well welcome, Melissa. Give us a little snapshot of who is Melissa Janiszewski and a little bit about why you're here with us. Well, I'm a associate pastor at Family Christian Center. Um, I'm here today because I lead the Unraveled group, a uh, local group uh, that follows the Pure Desire hmm. curriculum to lead women to freedom from sexual brokenness or hmm. love addiction. Um, God kind of, it was a funny thing because when I was asked to do this, I was broken so much in other ways Mm. that this thing hadn't really touched me, Mm. but I was asked to go through it because I was identified as potentially being good at leading such a thing. And it fascinated me that, you know, as I started, I would read certain lessons and I would be like, okay, yep, nope, not me, not me, not me. But God really challenged me. Mm. Seek me, see what I Mm. have for you. I waste nothing. And I discovered that this issue is massive as it is. Um, it's idolatry. Mm. It, it, it's all idolatry. Mm. And so 
the I love that we're speaking right against this particular idol that holds such a collective psyche within our community and that many in the community do, do not even understand. I was fascinated to discover that a Barna survey asked young adults and teenagers, they were rating morality. Young adults and teenagers feel that it is more immoral to overeat or to overuse wow. gas or electricity than to use porn. Wow. 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 So this is a desperately needed conversation. Absolutely. I'm grateful that we're having it within the body. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for that. Pastor Bo, by the way, I have to say life, not lifelong friend. Um, Feels like the it. 10 years since we've lived in Toledo this month, marking 10 years. Very shortly after, I'll repeat, we were walking through Oak Openings, I was, and you were with a very big Fido, German Shepherd. And I don't know, we're just both outgoing, extroverted, Jesus-loving people. Conversation led to the Air Force Academy, led to your, um, just, we just connected. And you, we've been blessed ever since. We've had you speak at a number of our events and on our radio program, and uh, just deeply blessed by your friendship, brotherhood, and wisdom. So, Pastor Bo, tell us about yourself. Yes, as I as I am, I've been blessed by your ministry and your family, and a mm -hmm. great example. And congratulations on your eldest son with his new uh, his new uh, song Th contract. Thank you. Thank you. It's wonderful. What a joy that is. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm Pastor Bo, married to Heather. And Beautiful I am, Heather. Uh, <laughs> I've been living in Toledo <laughs> for uh, 28 years, mm -hmm. and um, on in December of 2011, the Lord put on my heart while I was sitting in the Alto Hotel in Dallas, Texas, that from pornography to human trafficking, it's one industry. Mm -hmm. Lord put on my heart to break the link. Mm -hmm. And so break the link was formed in that genesis. Um, what that means is we are going to help people break the link, not only the link between pornography and human trafficking, where, where they are no longer feeding that demand, but we're also going to help them break the link from idolatry, shame, mm. disgust, sin, and death by the power mm. of Jesus Christ. Mm. Amen. Uh, the, Melissa mentioned that uh, sexual immorality is akin or is a fruit of idolatry. We know this to be true from Colossians 3.5 for, for those who like to check things in their scripture. So if you look at Colossians 3.5, you will see the link uh, between sexual morality and idolatry and so the lord has put us on this journey for about 10 years and recently the lord told us it is time to reach out to the body of christ mm. and to tell them to break the link yes and so what we've done is we've uh, we started emailing we have done uh, we're going to be doing podcasts we're going to put ads in the path you christian newspaper we're sending postcards to over 400 churches in the Northwest Ohio, Southeast Michigan, to their leaders, telling them that there is a way towards freedom. There's a way, a path of freedom, if uh, for the courageous, frankly, mm. who are willing to yes. do the hard work to gain that freedom. So that's what the Lord has directed on our hearts, and that's what we're trying to execute this year. Awesome. Fabulous. Thank you for that faithfulness to that call. That's just... You know, all of us stand to be strengthened and God wants to strengthen us, which is only going to open up the door and cause a floodgates of joy and freedom that he wants us to have. Every believer would benefit who've, who's been remotely aware of, of uh, anything in the past few decades with the prominence. Give us that contact. Breakthelink.org. Very simple. Awesome. Breakthelink.org. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. From that website, you can contact us via phone call through the website or as, or email. So breakthelink.org. I want to encourage you that this is something that we very much want to partner with, get into, avail to. So if you're more comfortable sending an email to alive at massimpact.us, alive at massimpact.us, please do so. So um, I want to just read a very short uh, portrait that uh, I did research, maybe reluctantly, fearfully looking up women in porn, because I will say I wrote a substantial article on this, kind of using the screw tape letters approach. You know, how is, how is Wormwood uh, speaking? And I thought particularly of men, mainly because I'm a man. Secondly, because, and I know I will just say this, every man whom I've known with some degree of heart-to-heart of -heart awareness, everyone, priests, bishops notwithstanding, have battled in some respect with this issue. Let me just get that out there. So if you're battling, you're not alone. God fashioned us 
in a certain to a significant extent for this intimacy and for men it is a visual thing by god's design it's like a compass right but it's one that magnet turns that needle away from due north that we see that we struggle and we battle with. So I want to affirm the good there. But um, a commentary from some of the priests when I wrote this had a lot of really positive um, you know, uh, affirmations of the article, but they said, you have no idea how this is escalating among women. And that really struck me. So I did a little search, <clears throat> found a great article. It's at ERLC.com. It must be a Christian type of basis. Do you know what that stands for? It's Ethics and Religious... Uh, Liberty Commission. Go, Melissa. Go, Melissa. Anyways, the the title is What You Should Know About Women and Pornography. So I want to read this, and then I want to just ask both of you out of the gates, why does this matter? Why is what you're doing consequential? So this is quoting, There are few comprehensive pornography studies on women and very little research is solely on Christian women. Researchers studying pornography conclude that the numbers observed among women in statistics like those below are climbing higher. And I'm going to give you some bullet points. 13 million American women click on pornographic sites each month. Porn sites get more visitors per month than Netflix, Amazon, and Twitter combined. Wow. Yes. The online porn industry makes over $3,000 per second. Wow. One third of women watch porn at least once a week. Let me repeat that again. Mm. Of all the women that you will meet this week, statistically, one third watch porn at least once a week. 80% of women who engage in online sexual activities, which is known as cybersex, also had real-life sexual encounters with their online partners, compared to the much lower proportion of 33% for men. That's intriguing. Let me repeat that. 80% of women who began, uh, if you will, through an online experience translated into real-life sexual encounters. Like, are you kidding me? Only 33% for men. Very interesting. 30% of internet industry is pornography. 56% of women, 25 and under, seek out porn. And 27% among women 25 years and older. Um, Surveys reveal women have positive associations between pornography consumption and behavior sexual permissiveness. As a result, women have more sexual partners and are more likely to engage in extra relational sex. Uh, finally, and there's more on this article, but I do want to note this and as a launch pad to get your candor as you are in the field dealing with real women battling with these issues. What's at stake? Why is this important? Why does it matter uh, to, if you will, to break through whatever resistance we have and seeking the grace God wants to have? When a person uses pornography, two dominant chemicals are released. I'm going to get this wrong. PEA, phenylethylamine. Melissa, you'll probably roll off your tongue. Do you know what that is? In adrenaline. I don't. I was I was going to say phenylethylamine as well, so the PEA. <laughs> there we go. Adrenaline. In adrenaline. Fused together, these two chemicals forge an intoxicating sensation which overpowers the pleasure of both oxytocin and endorphins. The neurochemical climax released during pornographic ecstasy mirrors the brain activity of a person on crack cocaine. Yes. In the book, Pulling Back the Shades, Erotica, Intimacy, and the Longing of a Woman's Heart, Julie Slattery and Dana Gresh state, quote, The problem is that PEA and adrenaline will only reappear as sexual experiences continue to be new exciting and sometimes even dangerous. There's more to this. So, um, just want to ask you out of the gates, why is this consequential? And let's speak particularly to Christian women. Well, it's incredibly consequential. You know, the church, it's been said that pornography is one of the biggest unaddressed problems in the church. Hmm. We don't really talk about sex. It makes us uncomfortable. So young women, the message they get is simply don't. Hmm. But that's not enough. We need to, they need to be instructed holy sexuality. They need to be instructed that God's actually a fan of sex. Hmm. I I don't mean to get too in-depth, but God even designed women with a piece of our body that has no other function than to bring pleasure. Mm -hmm. Now, Satan's trying to pervert this lie, just like he did with Eve in the garden, trying to tell tell Christian women that God's trying to keep something from them. And that couldn't be further from the truth. You know, God's, God designed it this way, and he wants it to be this holy union between a husband and wife that makes a relationship unlike any other relationship they will have. But 
we're not talking about that. We're not teaching the holy sexuality. We're not explaining and proclaiming the glorious beauty of sex as God intended it. So girls, young women, even Christian girls and young women, they're looking for answers. So where do they look? They, they're turning to, to porn. Right. They're turning to porn to define who they are as women, how, what they've got to do to be desirable, how, how a desirous woman should act. Um, it's fascinating to me. Real recently, there's, I don't listen to her music, but there's this pop singer, Billie Eilish, and she sings mm. this song, Bad Guy, that's really big and you hear everywhere. She came out that she started watching porn at the age of 11. Mm -hmm. And she says that this is this gross thing in our life. It's a disgrace that she feels like it fundamentally changed her brain. Mm -hmm. And we know scientifically that that's, that's true. Happens, right? And it profoundly affected her relationships. Because like you pointed out from reading that, in order to get that same dopamine release, we have to keep escalating. Mm -hmm. So before you know it, we're heading into areas of violence. One in eight videos on popular porn hubs are considered violent mm. material, 12%. And that's what's informing our youth, Gosh. what sex is, which could not be farther from the truth as God designed it. Right. Pastor Bob. And unfortunately, oh. as they go start going through that, that shame you mentioned comes oh. in. And nothing shut, silences us like shame. Right. Once we feel shame, then we isolate ourselves because if they knew this about us, they certainly couldn't love and accept us. So I need to isolate myself. Mm -hmm. But now that I've isolated myself, now I'm really lonely. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm really lonely, I'm depressed. And well, now I need a dopamine hit. So where do you go to get your dopamine hit? Well, if you can look at porn on your phone, in your hand, with you everywhere you go, then you can get that dopamine hit in just a second, but it's a false, it's a false hit. And it's a hit that takes from you and it deepens the shame. And before you know it, we'll talk about neural pathways a little later, but before you know it, you've made these neural pathways and it's not even consciously your choice mm -hmm. to reach that dopamine hit anymore. You just do it because it's what you've done. And it's so easy to get lost. That's why it's so vitally important that we be in relationships that disciple us to Jesus and to mm. the word of God and to help us to wash our minds anew in the word and let the Holy Spirit have his way and bring us back to who he created us mm. to be. I think, too, especially for Christian women who profess something so strongly, right, in particular those who are church going or, you know, have that personal relationship with Christ or prayer life, that that shame becomes an even greater wall because of, it's like, no, I'm Christian. I can't admit this to everybody because then they think this, this, or this, or then my relationship with Christ doesn't matter because if I'm doing, do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like just yes. that different people that we've talked with, um, and in general, that just seems to be the trap that the evil one continues um, to lay before people that just makes it harder to get out of that cycle. Mm -hmm. Pastor Bo. Yeah, just to answer, because maybe in women's minds right now and men, our groups maintain confidentiality. There are some, there are a couple of limits to it, but basically mm. it's confidential. Uh, I don't even discuss this with my wife. Mm. I don't even tell her I'm going to a meeting um, when I have meetings. She knows, well, she kind of knows, but right. I don't talk about it. <laughs> right. Uh, listen, there's no way we could call ourselves worshiping Jesus Christ if we have this duality of mind where the most intimate part of our being is subject to, subjected to the will of Satan, the wills yeah. of demonic, the demonic will. Colossians speaks of this. Second Corinthians chapter 10 talks about fighting strongholds and, and gaining control of your mind so you can worship the Lord with your mind. And of course, Romans 12, 1 and 2. What you are, what you worship. And what you worship dictates how you think. It tells you where to go for comfort. Mm -hmm. It tells you what's important, what's not important. And if you're running to anything other than Jesus Christ, you're giving that thing a hold onto your life. Mm -hmm. And that thing is transforming you into its image. So if you want to, if you want to look like Jesus, you must worship Jesus. And then you have the renewing of the mind. You start thinking like Jesus and doing like Jesus. And so the, the, the terrible thing about 
pornography is, uh, as Melissa accurately, and you too, Greg, it's a false, it's a false comfort. Yes. It will lead to disaster. It's just a question of when. And during the process, $3,000 a day, wow. right? That money is reinvested throughout the chain of human, of, of sexual sin, sexual industry. The most profitable aspect of the sex industry actually is human trafficking. Mm -hmm. That's why they do it. And so when you watch porn and you're pouring money into pornography, that money is being transferred into other areas that are simply unacceptable to any decent human being. Yes. Thank you for pointing that out. That connection is so important. Yeah, that's part I, of the link. Yes. So I'm talking more community. Now yes. talk personal. Mm -hmm. If none of us wants to share our wives or our husbands, mm. right? We don't want to share. There, that, there's an exclusivity that has to be maintained. If you're engaged in pornography, you are limiting your ability to have intimate relationships with other human beings. Mm. To include your spouse, children, friends, church, family. Mm -hmm. you're, 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 something is stealing you away from them mm -hmm. without question. Mm -hmm. And again, that leads to devastation, mm -hmm. distress. Even, you know, like we, Melissa talked about Billie Eilish. There are, there are actors who are very secular who are coming out. You know, actors against porn, men against porn, because they realize it's destructive. Mm. The problem has gotten so severe that there are men who are having, young men, who are having ED because they've watched too much porn. Mm -hmm. In fact, I would suspect some of the nations that are suffering, what's the big conversation point internationally besides the, the wars? Demographics. Mm -hmm. People do not want, uh, people have been tricked not to want family, yeah. mm -hmm. marriage. And you see entire countries crying for more babies, mm -hmm. crying for more, for stronger families because it's not happening. And these nations are in trouble. Mm -hmm. And it's Japan, South Korea, the People's Republic of China, Italy. It goes on mm -hmm. and on and on. So you can see the, ra the how this has ravaged the world, yes. the, the sexual sin. And then in the church, we know 65 to 75% of the men in any church, I can walk in almost any church in the United States, and 65 to 75% of the men, and there's two studies that I've looked at, Pure Desires as well as Barna. I'm not a big fan of Barna, but this one I give them. Mm. <laughs> <clears throat> um, that men, uh, men are looking at pornography at least once a month, mm -hmm. um, and engaging porno pornography. Mm -hmm. If you, and that's sixty-five to thirty-five percent. Oh, so yes. for how in the world are we going to see the church grow and be powerful if we don't have sixty-five to seventy-five percent of our troops in a healthy way? Right. That's on the men's side. Right. It's about fifty percent on the women's side. Mm. Um, two, two comments and a quick question. One, I love your groundwork laid for the renewal of the mind, right? And what that means. And, you know, piggybacking on the comments of shame from Melissa and what that does, um, it kind of levels the field, right? To sin in general. And, mm -hmm. and it is that the hard work of the renewal of the mind to be able to enter in um, to the relationship and the worship that the Lord intends. So, just sin, right? In general, obviously, this has a whole huge impact. Um, I forgot my other comment that, oh, I know what it was. Um, listening to you also, Pastor Bo, makes me, my mind went to our daughter who is battling different health issues mm -hmm. and um, the beauty of functional medicine that focuses not just on the symptoms, but the root cause. And as you just called out, right, to the church, the people of God, you know, okay, yeah, that's great. Try to fill the pews, try to do this program, try to do that program, but you're only going to grow the church. And I don't care about numbers, right? We care about, I mean, we do care about souls, right? But the, yes. the, um, 
the intentionality and integrity of that relationship with Christ comes when you focus on the root and what is mm. the issue at hand. And we can't ignore this issue as a church anymore because so much mm. other, um, so many other things come from it, as you've pointed out. So we can go more deeply into that if need be. But my question is, and I've not done the research, was there a specific um, cause or timing that flipped when pornography was more prevalent among men than women? Because even some of the stats that Greg read, you know, in, or the different priests talking about um, the issue has become with women's uh, use of it. So I don't know if there's an answer to that or if it's just kind of like culture is messed and that's what happens or... what. Well well, pornography use has always been much higher with men. The gap is closed, like a lot of things, like cigarette smoking, mm -hmm. uh, alcoholism. <laughs> the gap yeah. is closed. That's one of the negative side effects with the women's liberation movement, honestly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Women have picked up a lot of men's bad habits. Gotcha. So, but uh, I would say, you know, the significant thing, what, what, and this is not by survey, but I heard it in conversations with those who were in this field. When that book, um, Gray. Oh, Shades of Gray. Shades 50 Shades of Gray. 50 Shades of Gray. That book, is, at that point, hmm. I started hearing different conversations with people in this industry. Interesting. The book, Shades of Gray. That So what was that? 10, 15 years ago? Mm -hmm. 10 years I think ago? So. Yeah, something like that. Where, That's where the idea of women watching porn, and in that, I guess that would be reading porn. Mm -hmm. um, but people used to talk about women reading porn. And, and reading romance novels, right. that was more prevalent 10, even, you know, 10 yeah. years and pr prior. And then what we've seen in the last, say, 10, 15 years is women are now watching more. Mm. And a lot of gateway to it is this. Um, I hate to say it, and I'm not trying to be an old fogey here, but if you look at the video games, mm. that's a gateway drug. Hmm. And there's a lot of gateways. Just normal TV is yeah. a gateway. Commercials are a gateway. Now it's everywhere. You know, the whole sexuality of the, you know, trying to sexualize nine-year-old girls right. to look sexy. Right. I mean, the, the perversion's yeah. everywhere. But uh, yeah. you did see a shift about, I think you saw, the shift was about 10 years ago where I saw hmm. people talking about women participating in porn at a greater numbers. To punctuate that, well, listen, to listening that. today um, to Jordan Peterson being interviewed by Joe Rogan. Um, if you can put up with a few F-bombs here and there, adults, listen to it. But Peterson is fabulous in articulating the present cultural human landscape. And he really, I think, understands it quite acutely. And one factum that he points to is that Google, in doing research, so they have billions of bits of data, and they studied what is it that draws men to porn versus women. And oh, by the way, even just saying this this phrase is controversial, that I would have the audacity to presume man means what we think of man and woman means woman. That's come under attack. Mm -hmm. Matt Walsh's uh, documentary, What is a Woman?, is so popular because he so soberly simply asks the question, well, what is a woman if you're assailing, if a woman is just a subjective um, concept, then why do we even use the terms? It's, it's reduced to absurdity. Another subject. Uh, Peterson, though, recognizes the distinction between men and women is men are very visual and they tend to be more uh, into their own pleasure uh, for its own purpose. Women, uh, Peterson speaks of, and this is the Google studies, are more into the story. They're more into this postmodern concept of relational connection in that sort of way that draws them in. And you just sort of suggested women were always, in a sense, into a kind of porn. It was just a literary sort of porn. And there's, as we've always even understood in our days, we're fogies. I'm, you know, I guess you're more of a fogey than me. We'll be fogies together in this, Pastor <laughs> Bob. Men are in it for the roller coaster ride intensity, women for the intimacy. Now, a little bit of a, um, uh, connection to what I'm saying here, and I'm interested in everybody's comment. We've been kind of talking about this somewhat. When I was a child growing up in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, I've shared this story before, and we had the, the woods, and I was maybe fourth, fifth grade, came upon the stack of nudies, we'd call them, or whatever, and I was shocked. Like, I mean, it, it, it shook my latency period. I didn't even, you know, there was the oddities that were unbelievable to me, and I will say this, it was a little bit like the symbiote suit in Spider-Man. Of course, Tobey Maguire was the best Spider-Man. I'm just going to get that out there. It's important for this conversation. No, but the symbiote <laughs> suit, you're disagreeing with me. The, the black suit that he wears, 
that influences, I guess it's actually called Venom Symbiote, that influenced the way he thought about himself. He derived this sort of supernatural strength that caused him to defeat the enemy, but it profoundly affected the way he thought, his neurology, the way he looked at the world. And I'm going to suggest that porn, for me at that young age, to this day, age 55, uh, with my ever greater seeking God's grace, you know, the more holy you become, the more you see you're not kind of thing, I realize the degree to which poison influenced my way of thinking dating back to being a child in the woods with those seeing those magazines and how the battle really from that point onward I can clearly mark how it influenced my self-identity influenced the way I looked at the world at women influenced my creativity um, and so I want to kind of ask you the question maybe kind of shifting this somewhat to the second part of this program of the the, the potentiality for great freedom for great joy, for authentic intimacy with one's spouse and with all those, for self-mastery, the tremendous joy and glory of Christ taking on flesh, dying on a cross, pouring forth blood and water. I'll submit to you many, for many, those are just catechetical ideas that don't take, that haven't taken root in one's experience because they're poisoned by the symbiote venom suit of pornography. I would absolutely agree. Um, from speaking from a woman's perspective, when you've got young ladies looking to porn to define something as pivotal as their sexuality, I mean, we know that in a marriage relationship, this is supposed to be a picture of the relationship that God has with his church. This is a very important relationship. We know that sex was defined, was created to create this amazing union. And so then you've got women looking to this world's adulteration of what that looks like to define it we know from fmris actual physiological machines we have actual test results about the dopamine and how like you had said it mimics the response of like crack so when you've got those kind of neural pathways started, we don't understand neural pathways until until we do. You know, we don't understand that our limbic brain is fully formed by age six, mm -hmm. but yet our prefrontal cortex, our cognitive brain, the one that does the planning, the ones that determines what we will and won't do and why, that's not formed till our middle 20s. Mm -hmm. So we grow very adept at making decisions with our six-year-old emotional limbic self. Mm -hmm. And when we're turning to faulty lies of the world, like pornography, to define something that's so pivotal to human existence, we are lambasting what God meant for us. We don't understand that the way our brain works, I use a Netflix analogy, I have a really rough day at work, so I go home and I decide I'm not going to do anything tonight, I'm just going to sit and watch some Netflix. That's all the cognitive abilities I have left for the night. Then the next day you go to work. And it's another rough day and you think, well, you know what? I really enjoyed whatever show I was watching last night and I got a few episodes left. I'll just go do that. By the third or fourth night you're doing that, you're not consciously making the choice to choose to go home and watch Netflix. You've already started. The first time you make the choice, you kind of are pushing through the brambles. The mm -hmm. second time, you're kind of kicking rocks and making a walkway. The third time, you're you've kind of shed some of the grass along the walkway. The more we do these things, we end up building these neural super highways that we just end up finding ourselves on. We know what this is like. How many of us have driven home and not been aware? We get home and we don't even remember driving. Right, right. So when we don't have an understanding of, of scientifically what's going on our, in our brain, when we don't have an understanding of spiritually who we are, and who we were crafted to be mm. and how we were crafted to give and receive love and respect. Mm. When we don't have a solid understanding of those, the enemy's chaos just comes in and wipes it away. It's really hard mm. to stand on the rock when you're skating in slime. Mm. Another testimony quick and then uh, Pastor Bo, but just to punctuate what you just said, Melissa, which all everything so far is so formidable. And I do want to say, folks, you're tuned into Ignite Radio Live. Blessed that you are with us. Named one of Spodcast, Pod, Spotify's top podcast 2022. I have to get that in there, IgniteRadioLive.com. And you can access the great programming that is being offered right now. Breaking the link. 
Break, break the link. Break the link. Break the link.org. Break. Break so, Melissa, as you were speaking again, the implications for even, quote unquote, somebody as me who is seeking the heart of God, flawed, desires to live everything, a heart, mind, body, so those who know me know I'm flawed. But I want to say, I really believe, for instance, my penchant to want to play endless games of chess. Um, is it dangerous? On phone. Is on my phone. Is it damaging? Is it dangerous? Many will say, well, no, that's healthy. You're taking care of everything else. You're availing yourself. You'd rather play with your kids. You'd rather do all these things. My battle with self-mastery in choosing something other, a higher good and the higher a hierarchy of goods, writing a book, reading a book, uh, meaningful conversation. And I do believe there's place to play a little chess once in a while. But I mean, a, a bit of an obsessive thing that could be a personality thing, but I'm going to tell you and anybody who's listening, if you're battling with choosing a good thing, Part of that is what, what happens when we expose ourselves to porn or expose ourselves, I would even say, to lust things. And here is, if you will, a punctuation mark. When Israel wanted to master or defeat their neighbors, the Palestinians, you know what they did? They distributed pornography because they knew it would weaken their capacity to choose the good. And I will say among groups of men... A number of them in choosing the good, they know the good, they hear, they go to mass, they hear great homilies on leading in their homes and praying together as spouses. But week after week, month after month, year after year, they're coming back without any growth and making their homes that place of encounter. When they share honestly with me their capacity, their battle with will, they recognize a similar route that symbiote, if you are the poison, that has diminished their will through pornography. Pastor Bo. Yes, I, the 2023 campaign is to the body of Christ. We hope in 2024 to go to the community. Mm -hmm. So to my Catholic brothers and sisters, you say that in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity, mm -hmm. what is the greatest representation of that Trinity on planet Earth? Mm -hmm. Family, Marriage and, family. and the church. Life, yeah. If you have pornography going on, you are putting something in between you and your wife and you are darkening, you are marring the imagery of Christ in your, your life, your family's life. But there's a great choice you have. You can unmar it. Mm -hmm. You can clean it up. You can get out of the way and let the glory of Christ, the power of the Holy Trinity, flourish in your home. It's going to take courage. It's going to be, you know, I, I call... Uh, dealing with some of these issues. It's like, a, a, to be honest with you, it's like a mental, spiritual enema. It's, just, it's like not it. easy. There's <laughs> right. not a lot of homework per se, but the, it, the introspection and the honesty that you have to achieve mm. is painful. Mm. Dealing with uh, past hurts, dealing with present ways you think, uh, subjecting those present ways to the truth of the Holy Spirit and the truth of, the, of Scripture and saying, okay, I, this is what I value so much, but you know what? It doesn't line up. I got to let this one go. These are painful processes, but these processes are good. I will say this to you of all the group I've done now, I'm up to uh, my 11th group. We'll be starting mm -hmm. soon. So I've done, I've completed 10 groups. So I have a lot of problems, right? <laughs> I've gone through the course 10 times, right? That's 90 months, folks. Wow. 100 months. Thank Between you. 90 to 100 months. Praise Jesus I've, for your perseverance. Mm. Yeah. Um, no man has ever regretted finishing the program. Mm -hmm. no. all, all of them, to a T, um, have, uh, are thankful. Even those who have struggled afterwards, we've had some resistance in them. They've come back and said, mm -hmm. hey, we need you know, additional help. I can't tell you how many stories of testimonies of marriages saved, mm -hmm. uh, of uh, even like promotions and babies being born and things like this, things, beautiful yes, things happening. God. Why? Because they got this part right in their life. Mm -hmm. And this is the beautiful thing. I, I, and I, I know we're talking, they got this right. I, I don't mean to use that language. They had allowed the Holy Spirit to carry them to victory. Amen. That's more accurate. Mm -hmm. I love that. They were willing to say, Holy Spirit, take me. Mm -hmm. I need you. Holy Spirit never will let you down. You know, I learned something. Um, I was, I'm getting ready to preach on Luke chapter seven, chapter seven, and I learned something about the Holy Spirit's comfort. And I got into the Greek. The Holy Spirit comforts, but what is the nature of that com comfort? It's consolation and strength. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So it's yes. not like a little pat on your back, hey, how you doing, a little kiss. Okay, you need a you know ice cream sundae to feel better? No. <laughs> Holy Spirit comfort makes you powerful. Yes. It, it it instructs and empowers you to follow Christ in even a more devoted way. And by the power of Jesus Christ, we overcome. Amen. By the blood. I love that. Amen. So man, testify. So a man or woman come to you both, and we know right out of the gates, um, breakthelink.org, uh, there's an occasion for them to uh, be on a path um, where they can be guided into greater freedom. Romans 12, 1 and 2, Pastor Bo, from the beginning, you and I have shared this magnificent uh, pattern Paul gives us, inspired by the Holy Spirit for freedom. Um, make your bodies a living sacrifice, your spiritual act of worship. Conform no longer to the ways of this world, but be transformed inwardly by the renewal of the Spirit in your mind. Then you'll be able to know God's will, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Not bad memorization for a Catholic, huh? <laughs> Boom! All right. Oh, so um, <laughs> anyways, um, so a man and woman come to you, though, and you just articulated beautifully and truthfully that we are of the fabric of the Trinity. God made us in his image and the dynamism of love between a husband and wife, mutual self-giving love patterns the Trinity. Satan's going to go after that. But there's also a piece of this that a spouse can and appropriately should be the occasion of helping the other spouse get to heaven. That's the nature of marriage. It's the nature of the vow and God's grace is in there. So... How do you speak to them about appropriately engaging their spouse when you know it's such a sensitive area and there are nuances? I realize some couples may, women, men may have different issues, but it's got to involve apology and it's got to involve a sense of I'm going to pray for you and it's got to involve a sense of accountability. It's got to involve a huge magnanimity, right? A sense of let's get on the right course here together. Like, I, I want to help you make these steps. And in some, in supreme ways, there's been physical infidelity and um, and the kind of forgiveness that needs to take place there. So guide us a little bit. Somebody comes to you, the unspoken question to many, maybe watching or listening right now. Okay, I, I, I have addiction. The things you guys are speaking about, I, I, I'm yearning for greater freedom and greater intimacy with God. And, uh, you know, advise me of how some basic steps that might also include one spouse. Yes, that's a critical issue. There's, there is actually for both, um, for the men and for the women, there are accompanying courses. So for instance, if the men are going through seven pillars, the, uh, the wife could go through beyond betrayal, hmm. which would talk, to, which will help her deal with the betrayal of what the husband has done. One of the things I do say to, to the men is, first of all, do not give your wife a blow-by-blow blow on how you're progressing. Mm. They don't want to hear it. So usually the wife knows. Let's just say the wife usually knows something's awry, okay? Um, if, it's a, if it's a physical adultery, then we take, there's some parameters we do take. The wife uh, has to get involved. There's some physical safety things that have to occur. There's basically a contract that is basically behavior driven, honestly, mm -hmm. with some punishments if the behavior is not followed. If it's purely just pornography and the wife does know, I tell the men, listen, you're not ready to have a big discussion with, the, with your wife. First of all, you don't even have the vocabulary to describe mm -hmm. what's going on within you. So we got to start there. And I can't tell you how many men I've dealt with from 30, from 20 to 70s do not have the vocabulary to explain their thought life to their wife. Mm. Mm. So interesting. Don't don't even engage in that because you just make her mad. Right. <laughs> don't do it. No, no, you'll make yeah. her mad. Uh, so the thing you need to do is you need you need to tell her, I'm I'm with you can even use my name. I'm working on some things. If you want to talk about it, I'll talk to you about it. But let me work this out. Uh, and go through this program I'm in part of. And what will happen is she will start seeing a level of verbal intimacy and actions that she'll start seeing some changes. Mm -hmm. See, to regain, to regain the intimacy, it's not only a commitment, but she needs to see proof. Mm -hmm. She needs to see proof, real change for her to trust again. So we don't, at the end of the process, nine to 10 months, for the final step of the, of, the, of the seven pillars, 
is the wife has to sign the book. Nice. The significant other has to, if you're single, the significant other has to sign the book. And so in that, now she gets to read everything. Mm. Everything. Mm. She gets to look at all the pages and you have to, and you, and, but now you're prepared to have a conversation with her that doesn't just throw the muck upon her, mm. but takes real accountability of what you've done. And let me tell you what the mark is. And I usually see it six to eight months in. There comes a point when I look at the guy and I say, he has it. Hmm. What it is, is this. He's no longer thinking about himself, but he realizes the horror mm. that he's brought upon his wife. Mm. And he knows it and mm. he feels it. And there are tears shed mm. and he can just feel like he feels empathetically the disappointment, the betrayal that she has felt, mm. no matter what the mm. sexual sin is. That's beautiful. You may and have it's only at, only at that point should he sh open up his big mouth to start explaining things to her and talking to her about what's happening, because before that, he's just going to make her mad. Mm. We we both know, we all know here that this is far more pervasive than what any of us know because of that shame factor. Which means what? It means. There is so much more blessing that God wants to pour forth in people's lives who want to do more than exist, right? Who want to do more than hydroplane in God's grace. There's ways that we interact. There's attitudes that form those in our families. So men and women, I want to say, why is this consequential? More than even just for you, it has uh, implications for your spouse and for your home. And to paint the picture even further, what, what God wants to offer is think about that great retreat most of us have been on one, those who are in our audience. Crescio, Chirp, Ignite, Axe, fill in the blank. A powerful experience where at the end you're like, that was amazing, right? You had time away. You encountered Christ in a deep, meaningful way. And unfortunately, many come out of that and, and there's the big question, then what? Guess what? God designed your family to be all of that and much more. With the difficulties, with the fact that you got work and school and all these demands and logistics, and which of us don't struggle, let's just keep it really real. But that's what God desires. He desires our homes to be those places where we deeply, meaningfully encounter him in one another. And I would say, as you've said, Pastor Bo, many, many moons ago when we had our first conversation, if we don't get this right, we get nothing right. But if we get this right, Home can be that place that Crescio chirp on steroids. And I'm going to say to you, as one who has been preaching this, striving after it, structuring it, making it available, as kids get older, as there are different seasons, as the cultural challenges are around us, it never gets easy. And I'll say there's, there's a kind of a virtue here I'll throw out here as a step one for anybody who's listening, holy audacity. Kind of a holy audacity to say, I'm facing the pressure, I'm facing the friction. By the way, faith without friction is fiction. Faith without yes. friction is fiction. So the audacity to break through the friction of whatever it is that stands in the way and trust that like Peter stepping out on the water, Christ is gonna sustain us. And it's very worthy to do so. So folks, breaking the link break. dot Break, Break the link. The link org. And, uh, Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah. <laughs> she's so good. I want to get um, your thoughts, Melissa, stuff. in just a second. I sense there's um, great wisdom meant to pour forth from you. Now you feel all intimidated, don't you? Why do I say oh, that? Oh, dear Lord, please um, give me wisdom. <laughs> I do want to say that to men also. Um, Pentecost365.us. We're approaching Lent very soon. And we totally affirm these great programs like Exodus 90 and others that are inviting men into a place of radical freedom. Uh, and I supported, affirm it, I participated in them. But for men who are asking the question, what does everyday spirituality, like baseline, God wants to pour forth his grace? Are we doing the basics to receive the grace he wants to give us personally? that will overflow into our marriages and families and into our world, please check out Pentecost365.us. Melissa. Melissa. Jay Stringer did this study, and he found shame to be the biggest predictor of pornography use hmm. in both men and women alike. Um, by its very nature, unresolved sin in our lives creates this condition of shame where we hide and we seek, hmm. right? Or we seek isolation. So we don't want anybody to see that. Hmm. Um, the problem is, when we find, when we know we've got this pornography, this sin in our lives, we feel like if we admit it, that we're just going to be admitting, exposing our folly. Mm -hmm. We don't understand 
Romans 8, 31, that therefore now there is no condemnation in Christ. Mm -hmm. When we admit we've got this folly, when we can begin to understand that it was promoted by shame, we understand that the fact we have this in our life demonstrates that there is a part of our lives that we've not submitted to God. Mm -hmm. There's a part of our lives where we are not healed. There's a part of our lives where there's trauma. And instead of going to our father, Abba God, and asking him, you know, bring healing, bring revelation, bring wisdom, Holy Spirit, wash over me with your living water and have your perfect way in my life. We do like Adam and Eve in the garden, and we choose, we try to fix the problem our own way, mm -hmm. thus the idolatry. Mm -hmm. The yeah. problem is, this is such a fake fix. Mm -hmm. We were designed to be in relationship, right? We were designed in the image of Father, Son, mm -hmm. and Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. You know, we were designed, to, even God is in relationship as who he is. We were designed to be in relationship. Mm -hmm. Everything mm -hmm. about porn is about the individual. Mm -hmm. It's about the well individual's put. kingdom. It's about taking care of yourself mm -hmm. the way that seems right to you, regardless of mm -hmm. God, of your family, what have you. And that's why we can get lost in it. Um, we have to change our thinking. We have to change our beliefs. We have to see ourselves the way God sees us. We have to understand that God does not view us the way we view us. We have to be in his word. We have to allow his word to just massage over us and lay claim to those personal promises. Mm -hmm. And we have to, when our limbic system, like I discussed earlier, was fully formed by the age of six, this is the renewing of our minds mm. that God's talking about. This is that verse, you know, I once thought like a child. Uh, you know, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought mm. like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. Mm. And that's what this program is, mm. is it's, it's intentional discipleship. It's coming alongside with others and acknowledging, listen, I've got this thing in my life and I know it doesn't belong there. Mm. And guess what, folks? Mm. You cannot remove it by yourself, mm -hmm. by its very nature. Doing things by yourself is what got us in this position. But if you can be in a faith-filled community that calls you to be in the word, to read the word, to lay claim to the word, to, to let it inform your steps and to be accountable to the word and to a few select others mm -hmm. who are in the battle with you. Not everybody, just a few select. Now, God, you've given God the ability to take care of it, mm -hmm. to fight your battle, but you have to release it. You have to submit it. You have, mm -hmm. you have to acknowledge that Amen. there is a problem before God. And that's terribly scary. Mm -hmm. Everything in this realm that the father of lies runs right. tells us to keep it to ourselves. But there is freedom to be found. Mm -hmm. God will trade beauty for ashes. Mm -hmm. Those are not empty words. Mm -hmm. But it takes intentionality. And it takes a death to our pride. Mm -hmm. We're yeah. going to have to humble ourselves. Mm -hmm. And acknowledge that we may not be the people you think we are. Mm. We may be just as flawed and sinful as scripture says we all are. Mm. And for some of us, that's terrifying because right. we've built lives with masks trying to allow people to see us a certain way. Mm -hmm. So to own the real real of where we are in the privacy when we think no one's looking, when we think it doesn't matter. But those are lies just like the pornography is lies. It Amen. does matter. What well, you do in your private time matters to the body, to the mm -hmm. kingdom. And Melissa, you are an Esther. Amen. You are spit and fire. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that because I'm older than age 25, but the wisdom <laughs> that you are bringing and, and the, the promise that Christ does offer us. And I want to say to Catholics, we all need, as you say, to be much more uh, in a place of encountering the word St. Jerome, right? Ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. And there's a power when we, when we don't just quote unquote, get rid of the habits of tuning to junk and poison, where do we turn that appetite made for God? We turn it to him. And that's that's where this Amen. fits. That's where we read the word of God. And as Catholics, certainly good godly readings and reflections of the saints throughout the ages. And certainly we believe for 2000 years, brothers and sisters who are Catholics, holy communion. But I challenge you to consider 
um, if we're partaking of this which we believe to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity, holy communion is a translating into holy community. It's just a good challenge because that's the heart of this. Is it fostering holy community? We're coming in for a landing here, and I feel like we could talk for so much longer, but um, Melissa and Pastor Bo, we are so blessed that you took time to share with us such a consequential area. Which of us don't desire greater, authentic, true intimacy that only comes by relationship with God? As we conclude here tonight, again, I want to direct you to breakthelink.org. Five times a charm, I think. Breakthelink.org and check with us at uh, alive at massimpact.us. Check out Pentecost365.us, men, as we enter into Lent. Amen. I just want to say really very quickly, you have a choice. You can live the fraud or you can live for the real. Mm -hmm. Do you like the fake better than the real? The woman that you're sleeping next to, man, is the real. And she deserves your uh, your adoration. She deserves you fawning over her. She deserves you getting turned on by the simple curve of her cheek. And if you can't do that, there's a problem. I want to <laughs> urge you to go for the real. For the real. Amen. Because the real will bring you delight. Yes. will make you feel whole. Mm -hmm. will make you feel sweet. So let us pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father God, we thank you, dear Lord. We thank you for the pure desire of ministry and the, the inspiration you gave those who we stand on, shoulders we stand on, Judith Reisman and the Reverend Dr. Ted Roberts for producing this material. For you have shown us, dear Lord, a path to the real, to the freedom that is in Christ. Through your holy word and through the inspiration of your saints, you have shown us, dear God, that we do not have to lie to ourselves. We don't have to live in lies, that we can live in truth and love. And those things will set us free. We do pray for the courage, that the church will have courage to face the ugly so that one day they can revel in the beauty. In Jesus' precious name, mm. in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So blessed to have you with us again. Check out breakthelink.org. They're doing amazing things. And we invite all of those who you are listening, we just reaffirm this again. Wherever you're at, God invites us to something deeper. He invites us into the depths of his heart. Let's respond and know that it's more than just jumping through hoops. Um, right? It's a deep, meaningful, authentic relationship. And we're here with you on that journey. We're grateful for Annunciation Radio uh, and their great mission of broadcasting this truth and our ability to uh, partner with them. You can check out our past programs at IgniteRadioLive.com. And as always, you know, inviting marriages and families to more fully discover God alive personally with Him, overflowing to your marriage, your family world at ILoveMyFamily.us. Until next time, God bless you.